well, just to just introduce, yes, the topic is exploring education technology and features. In this case, I think that the, the approach is a bit different from what you from the um, what has been presented in the other in the other sessions because in this case it's not focused on design education but what i'm exploring is like the how technology is being uh, used and actually how, how how are the technological trends that are like undergoing and probably like we can see like more intensified in the future in education and the context is higher education so I would say that we can already, you know, many of, I, I guess that all of the participants are like involved here in academia, are you, you are teaching. So the trend saying that the monitor, techno monitoring of everyday practices and behaviors that we are facing in many domains in everyday life, it's uh, also present, quite present in education context. And we can see that learning analytics are like, for instance, one trend that has been growing in the recent years and most likely it's going to continue in the, in the near future. But it's also expanding to other practices that will fall more into this self-monitoring, quantified self-domain. So we might say that even though it, this has not been established yet in higher education, but there has been discussion at least in, in education and technology enhanced learning. And we might say that this is a trend that it's coming in the, in the coming years. So what with this project, what I what I wanted to, to explore is what are the views of like the educational community and especially students, because in many cases, when these data monitoring practices are being implemented, there is very little discussion. Actually, I, there is uh, the implementation, the design implementation of these technologies is hardly democratic. So people are like facing a context in which data is monitored about them without understanding what is being monitored and what are the implications for learning and for like the assessment of that learning. So with this paper, with this research, what I what I wanted to, to explore like, is what are students and educational community views about self-monitoring and how do they see the future on that? And through this, through by exploring the, the views about the future, understand what are their present fears and perceptions. So take that as a ground for like a starting a, a critical discussion about these practices. So here the design case is like prototyping a possible future of like techno monitoring in learning and education. And here uh, the approach or way of uh, doing that I was following, it's uh, like following like ethnographic experience futures. And I would say that this has been proposed by Candy and, and Cornet, and they were they are like building into what will be like um, experience uh, ethnographic uh, futures research and experiential futures. They make a combination, so that's something I was like uh, building on for like for this research. I'm not going to uh, get into detail here. We have little time, but just to say that this process is identifying four phases: map, multiply, mediate, and mount. And I would say that the way in which I was adapting that is uh, I was making it uh, following these phases, but in a participatory way. So there was like a first part of mapping and multiplying. And here I was using ethnographic research method, but also participatory design methods. So there were like co-design workshops. There were like activities in which participants, they were highly involved. And I will say that the unfolding of the prototype was based on their views regarding um, techno monitoring practices at what and what they consider what that will be desirable in the in the near middle term future. So, based on all these ideas and uh, an scenario and prototype was produced. The prototype was called Filler, and I would say the scenario. It's uh, I the assumption is that uh, well in the like mm, mental disorders have been already like spot as a growing trend in society and also in higher education and especially with the pandemic i think that we can we already got a, like a glimpse of how this is something that we should really pay attention to that so the scenario is based on the idea that well universities have spot this problem and they are like trying to support the students to uh, have like uh, better self regulation skills to be able to you know cope and take care of their well-being. So for this purpose, a prototype has been like, uh, or a service has been like developed. That's what I call the, the filler. And it works as a combination of like a monitoring, brainwave monitoring health set combined with some computational objects that are guiding interaction and a desktop application. 
So this is a bit like in a nutshell, the three components that are like making this prototype that was, we were like developing it in the context of this project and it was functional. So here you can see like a situation of use. We, we had se several iterations and we ended having some um, kind of testing sessions. This is one of the last sessions in which the students were like uh, using the prototype as part of like their independent study activities. Uh, actually, in most cases, it was like working on their master thesis dissertations, and they were using the, the prototype during a period of time, so, and the university premises. And here you can see one of the, after the, the students were like monitoring their activity, at the end of the session, they could get like the, visualize their like the activity throughout when they were studying and reading materials. So here you can see like a, a screenshot of how the, how the application looked like. So, what are the, the findings? I mean, in that case, we were like collecting data when the students were like uh, using the, the prototype. And after that, we were having like some interviews. And at the end, we organized a focus group with all of them. So there were like six people taking part all, all in, in total in the, for the second testing. So based on that, we, we conducted like, a, we adopted a, like a narrative inquiry approach. So we analyzed the, the interviews, we identified themes, but based the, the presentation of the results is based on stories that we could identify based on the, on, the, on the students' interviews. And I will say here that the stories, they are not meant to be conclusive. I mean, many other students could have been taken based on this data, but these are the ones that I select because I think that they are like quite complex and they show like a paradox nature in a way that some aspects that the students were valuing, but they are also, also putting into contradictions when like, I, I will show that through the stories. I think that's, that will be like a clear way. But the first story that I want to, to present I would define that as a, a matter of trust, live experience versus automatically generated data. What do I mean with this? Well, I mean, the students, when they were like uh, using the prototype, at the end of using the prototype, they were, before they could see it, the readings of the, of the EEG data, they were asked to self-assess their performance. To, that's to say, to say how much attentive do they think that they were during the study session and how much uh, relaxed. So. And then once they have uh, submitted their answers for this, then they were like confronted with the readings of the, of the machine. And those, and those were presented in parallel. So there was like most of the case, I would say in all of the cases, there was like a, a contradiction between what they were saying that they were like experiencing and what the machine was saying. And since the machine was using proprietary algorithm, that I would say that it's quite uh, common in all these quantified self devices, for them, it was like very difficult to say from what that data came from and why the machine was saying that they were more relaxed and attentive or, or the other way like. So they were faced with a dilemma that what should I trust more, my own impressions or the machines? And here you have like different reactions. Some of them were like confer using the machine to confirm their initial thoughts, some were adapting based on the machine was saying. So from here, we have like quite a like complex, interesting relationship. That's what I call with this first story. Second story will be like building, building objective truths through data. What do I mean here? Well, I mean that in that sense, uh, the readings and the assessment of the, what the machine was providing was um, based on quantitative data. So the attention and relaxation states that the machine was identifying based on brain waves was transformed into numbers and then it was presented in percentages. So again, there was like the whole thing was packed. And again, I will say that this is very typical from all these quantified self products with an aura of this is like objective data that we have been collecting through your, uh, based on your like uh, body activity, in this case, brain waves. So, and this is the reading. So the whole thing was, um, had an aura of credibility that, well, that was very hard to question, especially if you don't have like a good understanding of how these products work, how the algorithm works, that since it was closed, it was impossible. So again, you could see that for, for the students that you, have different positions. Some were very skeptical and were starting to question that, hey, what does it mean being relaxed? What does it mean being attentive? How the machine, who is defining this? So they were like already no, kind of noticing that the constructive nat nature of data. In other cases, they were like just saying the data said and blah, blah, blah. And this meant, I mean, I will say this is like very representative of what is going on nowadays with many aspects when data is collected. Data it works as a very hard entity that sometimes is very difficult to question, and it creates uncomfortable situations. So 
that's why I was selecting this story as something that I think it's interesting to get deeper on. And the third story, which I was titled as A Brave New World Based on Techno Monitoring. Well, here it connects a bit with the expectations of the students. And, uh, and in general, when people use, or when we start get, when, yeah, when we get sell, sold or when we start using all these products, many people, uh, many of the students were actually say, getting into, even if we didn't kind of tell them this will help you to be more productive or you should use this because you will achieve whatever. But many cases, the expectation was that if I use this tool, I will be more productive, things will go better. And it was like a very uh, clear link with all this neoliberal discourse in which there is like a, a stress on self-improvement, self-managerial, and actually getting like better. And, and it's a, in, a, in a growth paradigm in the sense that it's not, you know, you have to enter the game. It's not possible to stop Get, and, and get aside and say, well, why am I doing this? So I would say that in that case, uh, with this story, what I want to say is that any product that fall in this that, uh, that self-monitoring paradigm, they are like connected with a neoliberal uh, agenda. And it's something that even if you want to use it with a more like critical attitude, it's very difficult to dismantle that because that goes as tacit knowledge. And these were things that with uh, when like when interviewing the students and when having discussions, all these things were coming into the yeah, to the fore, in the forefront. So here I would say that for details, go to the paper. <laughs> so I will, same as with others, we don't really have the time. But I just wanted to highlight that these three stories are like, I think they were interesting because they were like bringing aspects connected to agency and empowerment when using these tools. Also, they're regarding the role of data and how it's constructed. But again, it tends being like having this aura of credibility and objectivity and the reinforcement and the reinforcement of specific subjectivities when using these tools. And I think that these aspects are things that are really important to, to discuss when we talk about the use of uh, techno monitoring in learning and education context, no matter if we're talking about learning analytics or if we're in a more like extreme cases scenario as this one. And so these are things regarding content wise that I think that are missing from the current landscape of how is the, these practices in education. The other thing I will say that is that by having like a speculative critical design approach, uh, it, it enables to have a critical reflection from the academic, uh, from the educational stakeholders on these issues. So in that sense, I think it was like really valuable to, to get a conversation started and especially from a critical point of view and get deeper than what you will get, uh, what, what you will have with, uh, without this experiential approach. And finally saying that by having like a participatory approach in the sense that all the, the ideas of the prototype and the, the unfolding of the design was based on students' views and, and wishes, it enabled to get deeper and confront them with, uh, in a way you could say that be careful with what you wish, but to confront them to that and have like a bit more like deeper understanding of what is then going to be the implication of these tools in your own life, in your own learning experience. So with this, I will say that this is the presentation of the paper. Thank you a lot. I know that you are very tired, so happy to, to hear your questions. Thank you, Eva, so much uh, for the great presentation. And I would like to ask a question at this time because, uh, Eva, I have news for you. We have uh, used uh, these well-being monitors with mm -hmm. our um, teachers in higher education this fall and I would just like you to uh, elaborate on two findings. Of course, we haven't published any paper we, because we just tried as emerging technologies. And one of teachers told that um, it was surprising for me that I saw that I had more stress uh, while preparing uh, a, a lessons pre uh, compared to conducting lessons. So it's the one aspect. So if it's surprising, then it's question whether I should believe my body or the, <laughs> you know, this, the system. But uh, talking about empowerment, uh, uh, when uh, she went, for example, to negotiate with, I don't know, with salary conditions or work conditions, uh, she told, you know, I'm wearing the monitor. Uh, you will see what will happen to my well-being level when I hear something unpleasant. You are responsible. <laughs> so uh, you see, there might be even another type of uh, empowerment, you see. I'm empowered what you do to me. So uh, maybe just some, some comments, or, uh, whether they are 
uh, really useful or whether we are going to use these uh, devices on, for the right purpose in higher education, if you think from the teacher perspective. The, here I will be very critical towards the point of like having to justify with data, like how one is feeling, because in, in a way you might say, if you feel that you are, that the well-being is not supported in the, in the environment because of many different factors that I think that they are like quite uh, like in many different contexts where we're all living that, like putting that to the point of that you have, that you have to wear something to justify that you are ex- stressed or that you are like not been, being able to cope. I think that that's like uh, putting the problem, uh, a general problem that is systemic, throwing it into the individual domain. And I think that this is a serious problem that uh, that's not the personally I think that that's not the right way to approach that but if we end into that then I think that yes using tactics like saying let's see how you how do I feel when I when there is this situation or one or putting the thing to the limits and showing that data is it's it's constructed who decides many times in especially with these tools what is being monitored is what it can be detected through the sensors not really what it makes more sense so I think that there should be really a very critical discussion about the use of these tools, especially when we're talking about things that are more like a community. I mean, I think that in higher education, we're talking about a community. And I think that we should be talking about how to make this community more like and based on care and on having like supporting each other rather than being like a race in which individually we have to justify that, hey, we are feeling exploited. So I think that that's the wrong way of approaching the problem. But if, if the thing goes in that way, I think that yes, use tactics and use whatever to create this critical discussion. So 